Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about this company right here and if the film photography bubble finally popped. At the time of this video, which is March 1st, the Kodak film prices have already increased to the new set that has been reported for quite some time now by Cosmophoto. It didn't really make that many waves back then in December when it was first reported, but then this screenshot went out in February. I think it was on Valentine's Day of all days. And it was this screenshot that got reshared a bunch of times on Instagram and Twitter because it showed the whole line list of every stock that got increased and it set the entire community on fire. Why was this one more infuriating? Well, it's because we had to see this news twice just kidding but it was more so because we saw how much Porsche would go up all the way down to ultra max and color plus but what was really strange about the screenshot was that we were given a price range of all the film stocks why weren't we given one definitive number like 90 80 or 70 why is there a ten dollar swing between every single item don't you think that's a little bit strange? So I did my research and I contacted a bunch of my friends who are in the industry and I was able to reach out to my film lab owner at 35M Pro to get some bigger answers. Even today, before this film increase even happens, I've seen on Amazon that like some rolls are like $100 for a pro pack, but then sometimes I stumble upon an obscure website that sells like $70 for a pro pack. Like, why is it so unregulated? Kodak sets a price, right? Then where does the variability come in? Well, first of all, we don't buy directly from Kodak. The variability comes in from the distributors. We buy in bulk from distributors. Okay. And each distributor has their own prices based on the relationship that we might have with them, or there might be some shipping costs that are incurred, or they might set some caps, like minimum requirements that we have to fulfill. So why is there even a middleman to begin with, like with all the distributor thing? Because to me, it makes no sense why Kodak would not sell straight to an account like you or an account like Moment. It doesn't even seem cost effective, so like, why can't you just buy straight from the source? I would love to. Kodak is a manufacturer, and so manufacturers never sell directly to consumer because distributor would buy hundreds of thousands of rolls. They have a minimum ordering, like a bulk, they sell it in bulk, and we can't purchase that amount. Mm. That doesn't make sense for us as a business. But a customer will only buy it to 10 to two rolls. Mm. And it doesn't make sense for a customer to go directly to the manufacturer and say, I want to buy 12 rolls. And are these distributors independent from Kodak? Yes, they're independent from Kodak. At the end of the day, uh, we're not in the business of film. Mm -hmm. We're in the business of film developing. We're a small film sense, lab. Yeah. And so what we want to do is we want to encourage people to shoot more film. So I try to keep the film prices at the lowest as I can mm -hmm. so that I encourage photographers to shoot more film. And in return, they'll hopefully bring the film back to me so I can develop the film for them. Okay, so that was pretty good insight on such a short conversation about the price volatility and swinging between each retailer for film photography goods. But let's dig deeper. What are some of the more external things that could play into the price increase that has been happening three years or four years, year over year? Okay, so on the topic of external things that are contributing to these rising prices, let's not forget the cost of the materials that even go into these film stocks. The first one being silver. Silver halide is the key material for the light gathering capabilities of every single film stock out there. I don't know if anybody checks on the price of silver every day, but at the beginning of the pandemic to now, the price of silver has skyrocketed, meaning that the cost of film has to go higher to compensate for that. Yet another thing to consider is the cost of freight shipping. Now, obviously there has to be chemicals and materials shipped to the manufacturer in Rochester, New York. That is very expensive. At the beginning of the pandemic, that also starts to skyrocket and still is very high. And once everything is all said and done and manufactured, the price of freight shipping to the distributors are extremely expensive. And then from there to the retailers, to the labs, and then we have to pay to compensate for these rising costs as well. Now, of course, an increase of price for a product doesn't necessarily mean that the value goes higher, but something that can increase your value as a photographer to get hired is having a website to host all of your beautiful work. And you can make a website with this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace provides some of the industry leading tools for making a portfolio for photographers like us who want to be taken seriously. I recently renovated my website to be more focused on my documentary work. Squarespace allows a lot of customizability from their award-winning templates to something as simple as changing the background to black. I love how my website feels more mature, and if I have any questions or problems, I know I can contact the 24-7 customer service to get myself squared away. You can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash chrischu. Use my code chrischu at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. 
All right, so hopefully I did a good job on providing somewhat of a holistic view on what is happening in this whole entire messy situation. So let's talk about the question on why you clicked on this video. Did the film bubble finally pop in 2023? Before we answer that, let's skip a couple steps backwards into what I said in November 2021 when I talked about another price increase that happened two years ago. In that video, I made a couple statements on the situation that we were dealing with back then. Number one being, film is an inelastic product. Long story short, it means that people are going to buy it no matter what, kind of like gas for cars. Statement number two, I said that film photography will probably lose popularity in social media and only the diehards and professionals will keep on shooting film because the price at that time finally passed the thresholds where the accessibility started to decrease enough. That ended up being true. And statement number three was that a new company or new companies will pop up and start to feed the bottom line with new film stocks that were more affordable because Kodak Gold, Color Plus, Pro Image, and all that jazz was starting to get a little bit too expensive at that time in November 2021. Was that true? Kind of. I'd say I was around 50% correct about the things that I said back then, but with the situation we're dealing with right now at the time of this recording, March 1st, 2023, I'm already starting to observe a couple things. Number one, we're seeing something that has not happened yet, and this is a triple digit price tag on a film photography stock. Porsche 400 and a Pro Pack post tax is going to be over $100, and that is a pretty demoralizing number to see. The second thing, which probably most of you have either seen or experienced, is that film has lost a lot of wind in social media media the participation level is just not at a comfortable level anymore and have you noticed that there has been a huge drop off in content from film photographers on youtube it's kind of sad and three there have been some companies pushing out new film stocks i've seen manual 400 i've seen santa color 100 and even camera manufacturers are jumping back into the game with the new release of the m6 and pentax coming back which is super exciting but is it too late for them to jump into the game now so with all this being said did the film bubble finally pop nope and before you start going crazy in the comment section, let me explain what a market bubble is in the first place. A bubble in the market only occurs if there is a rapid price increase on a certain product, and in our case, that is for sure happening. But a bubble pop only occurs when there is a sudden contraction in the price of that product when the market corrects itself that is not happening yet so how can a bubble pop occur well i'm no economist but a couple ways that i've read and researched is that one investors can pull out when they lose confidence in the product that they're investing in they could say that the value is no longer there and they're just like no it can't be sold anymore and the second of probably many ways that i've heard is that the market can decide that the price of the product has exceeded its value by such a large margin that they just stop buying it is this the year that we're gonna do it so let's take a deep breath and think <sighs> Has film exceeded its value? From an eye test, I would even say that it has. From your perspective, you could agree with that as well. But how could we even know? Someone could make the argument that film has just followed the inflation calculator, kind of like the release of the new Leica M6. The $5,500 price tag freaked a lot of people out, but with inflation from when it first came out in the 80s, it's supposed to be the same price. But is that the case for our film stocks? Well, Let's take a look. The funny thing about market bubbles is that we don't really know if we're in one or if it popped until way after the fact. A pro pack of Porsche 400 is, yes, pretty doggone crazy that it's over $100 post tax. Is it disheartening? Absolutely. But has it crossed the line yet? We don't actually know. All right, so let's talk winners and losers of where we're at now. The losers, literally all of us. Just kidding. But it's a lot of us. Probably the most egregious thing that I've seen on this price sheet is the price of Ultramax, Gold, and Color Plus. These are the ones that are supposed to be affordable, but why in the world is Color Plus $217? That's only $3 cheaper than Portra. Like, I would rather just get Portra. Ultramax? Come on. Come on, what are you doing? Come on. All of this is luxury now. It's undeniable. I mean, like, you can still buy film. Anybody can do it. Like, it's not wiped off the face of the earth. It's just that some people are going to have to space out their inventory a lot longer than some other people. But probably the biggest winner from this, and I haven't even said this name of the company this entire video, it's Fujifilm. A lot of people are going to start flocking over to Fujifilm's X system. They literally have a grip on the digital market for everybody who loves film but can't afford it. And they are doing a killer job. Thanks, Kodak. 
You're making Fujifilm win. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope I didn't depress you guys too much. Oh, my cheeks are very pink probably right now. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and comment down below about what you thought about my, oh, about my thoughts, and I will see you guys in the next video. <sighs> Hang in there. And you can still shoot film. You can still enjoy it. Do whatever you want within your means. Have a good one. Peace.